cheat meal is is this build up anticipatory thing and i and i get it from the whole like dopamine addiction excitement pizzazz flash drama like it kind of fits into all that stuff it, and there's this hope of somehow shortcutting or hacking as we you know we I, I took a giant piss on the the whole uh, <laughs> uh, you know a, a hack concept a, a podcast or two back. Um, it's just all fucking fake. There's nothing real to it, and all you know it's the same deal that drives people to purchase a car that they can't afford, and they're leveraged to the gills to pay for a car so that they got some sort of like status or flash or pizzazz. And this may sound to- totally insane, but I see these things travel in in unison so you know the same thing that gets people fired up about this idea that they are going to be able to uh uh you know cheat meal their way to a skinny sexy body is the same shit that's like hey baby you work hard so you deserve every you know a maxed out credit card and all the car that you can buy and six times more house than what you can afford even though it's at the top of the market and you're going to be fucked soon you know it, it's like this whole thing and people open their mouths, disengage their gag reflex and like take it all, you know, balls up <laughs> into their face <laughs> and they're just like, Oh God, I'm gagging. And it's like, yeah, you're gagging because you're gagging on a bunch of bullshit. And, and you know, the, the, uh, the media cock that, that you decided <laughs> would seem like a good idea. And it's not, and it's just all the same shit. And I guess that's why I get so spun up. Like, uh, it, it's kind of a chop wood carry water, and like you find your pizzazz from something besides food and purchasing cars. And, and you know, it, like if you work really hard and you just love cars, cool. God love you. That's great. But live within your means. Like the stuff I'm talking about is this consistent behavior where people get themselves in trouble by not understanding their own physiology and our own makeup as human beings. And it's like, you know, hookers and cocaine are exciting. Oh, wow, gee whiz. And, and it will also potentially undermine your life if you're not smart about how you, you tackle shit like that. And, and uh, so, you know, I see a lot of this stuff as like a bigger systemic problem where people just spend no time just alone in their own head thinking for a moment about like, how am I living my life? What type of human being am I? What type of relationships do I have in, in my world? You know, like... Uh, uh, CrossFit HQ recently just had a picture up on on one of its uh, 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 videos that, it, that that they had, and uh, up on the, the the wall of shame there was a picture of Osama bin Laden, Saddam Hussein, and me. Huh. And I was just checking this thing out, and I'm just like, what's the internal dialogue with those people? What's going on in, inside the heads of those people? You know, and what's the imagery that you're trying to portray with this? And it, it's interesting. There's so many good things to to that scene and good things to you know society at large and media at large and all the rest of that stuff but when we start doing really pathogenic shit like that what's the internal dialogue and what what's the the you know the the uh the shortcut that people are trying to find instead of just like having some peace within their own skin between their own ears and and living a a good life but i i got to tell you that that life isn't the uh, the flash, the excitement, the shortcuts, you know, it's work. And you have to find some sort of joy in the day-to-day existence and work. And, you know, the relationships you cultivate and the people you love and, and the, the relationship that you have between your own ears. So, okay, that was completely far afield, but um, 